All right, so I'm working on the, uh, I believe, yeah, this is the Y extension for the G0704. Um, I had this block that was perfect for Haas's plans here uh, for this extension, and um, I was lucky. I had to remove, well, I still have to remove quite a bit of meat off of this, but it was a good sized block. I didn't lose more than a half inch on any of the um, measurements, so not a lot of waste. But um, one thing I wanted to just point out, uh, if you guys are doing this, I didn't have enough clearance to take this full depth of cut because of where I had my tool um, in the collet. I had it up there so it was nice and rigid. Um, but in order for me to go down uh, and get this final piece, I had to stick it out a little bit further. But I only stuck it out far enough to get to the bottom of this. And that's it. Uh, you want to have your... Uh, piece as far up I would say as possible especially on doing a an operation like this I'm actually taking quite a bit of meat off in uh, one pass here I'm not doing it lightly um, I'm kind of taking advantage of the rigidity of this uh, bridge port so anyway I just wanted to point that out you know if you get to this position you could a flop this over on the other side and then attack it from there but then you have to reset and everything uh, I decided to do it like this and then when I go to take the uh, the remainder off of this other end because this has been cut with a bandsaw um, the I'll be able to stand this and just mill that uh, straight off that other side because I'll have something uh, somewhat true here so I'll just put this vertical in the vise stand it up clean that other side up and then I'll flip this over one more time and get, do the finish pass on this side um, because you can see the finish isn't perfect on there um, but anyway this is just quick getting me close and um, for this part um, the the actual dimension of this isn't going to be too uh, big a deal because this is going to be the side uh, I would say the only thing that's going to be super crucial on that is the finish for uh, aesthetics now I'm going to bring down that final dimension of so I've done I guess two out of three of the sides on here that I, I need to get all cleaned up um, now what I'm gonna do since this is the final one and it had a couple of dents and dings and stuff I'm just gonna take a few passes with the milling file and knock off any of these little high spots on here so I can get this to go flat on my parallels I just wanna knock off any of these so I can get it on there nice and flat. This is the measurement that's going to be the most crucial as far as flatness is concerned because this is the going to this is going to be the spacer between the bottom of the mill which I I I want to call it the saddle but that's not the proper um part. I I don't know what it's called but this is the spacer for the the Y where the base of the milling machine meets the vertical column and this thing's got to be dead on or at least I would like it to be so I'm just knocking off any of these little burrs that were sticking up and now I'm gonna take this and flip it over and make sure there's no little pieces of debris and I'm gonna bring it down onto my parallels and once I get that close I'm going to take a mallet and I'm going to tap it get that thing snug so I haven't torqued the vise down all the way yet but what I wanted to do is make sure that my parallels have even pressure Make sure that neither one of them is sloppy, because that's what can happen if your workpiece comes off of them uh, due to some uneven pressure. So anyway, I just wanted to show you this little trick. Um, something I learned at machinist school, uh, they taught us to tap these down. And with all this being said, uh, I went to school for my own hobby purposes 
not so I could work in a job shop. So um, I'm not that fast at machining. I just have a big passion for it. It's time to show you guys a very expensive layout fluid. It's called a Sharpie marker. Green works good. Um, just coat your part in that and you can scribe away. So it's perfect for doing layout. And uh, I'm just gonna roll through here really quickly and do a crude layout process with this very expensive set of di digital calipers. All right, so um, I'm not gonna read off these numbers because it wouldn't be right, but anyway, set this up. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. Right, and there's another one. Damn, I gotta do math. It's not right. And if you're thinking of getting into machining and you're wondering if it gets more exciting than this, it doesn't. But I enjoy this a lot. And uh, yeah, this is, this is fun for me. So maybe now you're thinking, that's not something I want to do. You're probably right. But if you don't have the patience to come out here and take a bunch of cuts on something and measure things and do a little extra layout to make yourself successful, you probably won't be making anything fancy. I'm not a good machinist. I'm still bottom of the bucket. I'm not even an apprentice. I'm worse than that. Because an apprentice usually has a journeyman there to help them out and show them things. So. Yep. Anyway, I'll show you how the scribes kind of look on there. You can see it just basically adds contrast so you can see your lines. Then you can take your center punch and center punch those areas. Wanted to touch base on this uh, whole center punch thing. Um, so I went to use this. This is an old one, uh, an old Stanley uh, made in the USA. Still very good. It's been re-ground uh, many times. And I went to do uh, my holes here and realized that the, the little center punch needed to be sharpened again. And then I was thinking, you know what? I could resharpen that one again, or I could just make one really quick out of a high-speed tool um, blink I have. This is a 3 8 piece of high-speed steel. And what I did was I just uh, took it and put it inside of my cordless drill. 
like this, chucked up on it, and then I went to my belt sander and I just held it at this angle um, and turned it on and ground that down. And that was real easy. And I made a, a nice um, angle like this so I can really see where it's going. And that other one has a very uh, blunt point to it. And that's, you know, that works fine. But um, I wanted to do something a little different. And now I have one that I made. And this can be used for a long time. So I plan on giving this a shot. But you can see that point. And that might be a little much for maybe doing steel or something. But for this aluminum, let's see if that will focus on that. It's kind of blurry. Anyway, it's a real sharp point. And just placing it on this, it's real easy to see where it gets to the uh, crosshairs. And try to bring this tripod up in here. Damn. You guys, I'm sure, have done this before, but anyway, just getting a little tap. And this is actually a lead hammer. Um, you can use a regular ball peen or whatever you want to do, but it's super, super sharp and goes right in there. So just wanted to share that with you. If you don't have a center point or center punch, you can make one out of anything, uh, especially when doing it, you know, just punching into aluminum. Just grab something that's made of steel and then chuck it up in your drill. You could even use like an old drill bit maybe um, and just get that thing to a sharp point and then uh, start punching away. Yeah. All right. I'm kind of cheating here. Um, I've got this very nice end mill, and uh, it will plow right into this stuff, no problem. And um, it's exactly five eighths of an inch. Um, and these holes have to be an eighth of an inch with the exception of one. And I measure uh, between 0.625 and 0.626 uh, on that. I did one as a test, and if it was a horrible disaster, then I wouldn't do it again. But after seeing this finish, the first one has, it's, it's great. It's almost like it was bored with a boring bar, which I have one or two um, but I was thinking you know what this thing seems to just consume aluminum like butter so I wanted to give it a shot and I'll let you see what's going on here so it's just a two flute end mill I'll do a little test just to make sure I'm centered with this aluminum but I mean we're over an inch already down Chip evacuation at the end is a problem, so uh, you'll see I have to start peck drilling. I get down there a little lower because I'm actually burying the end mill completely in the material. You gotta let your chips out. And it's just about ready to go through. There we go. 
It's out the back side. Here we go. Straight through. <laughs> Man, that saves some time. So I basically center drilled it and then was going to step it um, the whole way and then decided, you know what, I've got this badass end mill, um, why don't I risk ruining it? So anyway, that worked out great. Now I've got to go back to center and I'll do the rest of these and all that. That still gets me, I don't 100% trust <laughs> that it's going to stop on its own, but it always does. We should be getting pretty darn close here. So the Y extension is completed, um, total time. A little bit embarrassed to tell you this, but it, it, it was probably at a minimum three to four hours. And that's for me, I'm, I'm not a, uh, a professional machinist, um, but I do have some nice equipment that I've, you know, bought over the years and um, it really helps. But there's some little things um, along the way that snag you up. Um, yeah, my digital readout was giving me some issues. Um, uh, so I went back to the old dials. Um, actually, uh, took the time to, oh, sorry, I have a pretty cheesy mount. Let me show you what that mount is, just in case you're curious. I have a tripod and on that tripod, I have one of these little flexible things you can mount anywhere to hold the phone. So uh, my dials were actually so dirty, I couldn't read them. And I took the time to clean them now because I actually needed them. This would be the first time I've ever used the dials. Um, and so all three of them, I cleaned those up uh, with some acetone and a Scotch-Brite pad. So anyway, just kind of wanted to show you um, what you'd be expecting if you were to build um, one of these things. Um, yeah. Anyway, fun. Um, it was nice to have a chunk of aluminum, so I didn't have to buy one. I actually was given this by a friend, and uh, yeah, I couldn't believe it. It was so close to being the right size. It was, it was crazy. So anyway, all these chips, 
though, are from this one project. 